From 2011 to 2021, the makeup of the S&P 500 changed on average 21 times a year. Change in the index is normal, but typically changes happen because companies get bigger and smaller. For example, one of the most recent changes to the S&P 500 was in December when First Solar was added. Now over the last five years, First Solar has grown its revenue about 50%, so it's gotten bigger. By contrast, Fortune Brands got smaller and so First Solar replaced it in the index. So typically changes are made because companies get bigger and smaller. But there's a company that I believe will be added to the S&P 500 in 2023, and it's not just because it just recently became big enough. Hi, my name is John Quast. Thank you for coming to my YouTube channel, Working Capital. In this video, I'm going to tell you what the company is, and I'm also gonna tell you about something called the S&P 500 inclusion effect, what it is and whether it is something that should influence your investing decisions. But before we go there, I wanna give you some context on the S&P 500. The S&P the S&P 500 is a tool created by a company called Standard & Poor Global, which is a financial information and analytics company. And all the S&P 500 really is, is a curated list of the largest and most profitable US-based companies that are on the stock market. And the reason the tool is useful is because it's representative of the entire US economy. Now this is where something called an index fund comes in. For example, financial institutions like Vanguard have created products built around the S&P 500. And these products can be bought and sold just like stocks. Let's say that you go out and buy a share of Apple, the company. In that case, you own a small ownership position in that company. By contrast, if you buy a share of an index fund, you own a small piece of all 500 companies in the S&P 500. And investing in an S&P 500 index fund is a great way just to bet on the American economy. And it doesn't require a lot of thought. So if the US economy does well, it's only logical that the biggest and most profitable companies would also do well. And that's why the index would go up. Okay, so here are some of the criteria for the S&P 500. First, a company has to be based in the US. It also has to have a market capitalization of at least 13.1 billion or the value of the company. It needs to meet certain liquidity requirements, so at least 250,000 shares have to change hands in a month. It also needs to be a profitable company, and so it doesn't have to be profitable every quarter, but the sum of the last four quarters need to be positive. In other words, it needs to have made net income on a trailing 12-month basis, and the most recent quarter has to be profitable to be included. And there are also other requirements, including IPO seasoning, which means that a company could go onto the stock market and meet all the other criteria, but it's not going to be included in the S&P 500 until it has been on the stock market for at least one year. So let me tell you the company that meets all of these requirements right here. That company is Airbnb, symbol ABMB. It is US-based, Based in San Francisco, the liquidity is definitely there. Over the last three months, the stock has averaged about 5 million in average daily trading volume, which is more than enough. And a lot of people don't know this, but it is actually very profitable. It has 1.6 billion in net income over the last 12 months. And the most recent quarter was the most profitable ever at 1.2 billion. It went public in December of 2020, so it has met the IPO seasoning requirements. But what makes Airbnb so interesting from an inclusion perspective is the fact that it is already worth $75 billion, which far surpasses the inclusion guidelines of $13.1 billion. So this isn't a case of a company recently getting big enough. No, Airbnb has long been big enough. Because there's good reason to believe that Airbnb stock could be included in the S&P 500, I'm sure that some people watching are wondering if they should buy the stock before it actually happens. And there's actually a theory out there called the S&P 500 inclusion effect. And this theory believes that stocks that are included in the S&P 500 wind up out outperforming the market average between the time that it is announced and the time that it actually happens. And this actually makes logical sense. After all, there are a lot of index funds that are tracking the S&P 500 and they have to buy shares when a new company is included. This buying pressure is demand and the law of supply and demand states that when there's a lot of demand, the price goes up. New data is showing that the S&P 500 inclusion effect is completely an outdated theory. So in September 2021, S&P Global published research on the effect. And it gave a lot of good data showing that it used to be a thing. However, starting in 2011 and going all the way through 2021 when the piece was published, the benefit of the inclusion effect completely disappeared. In other words, it no longer exists. And there's a good reason for this. As it turns out, people invest in stocks more now than they ever have. And all those extra investors mean that there's more liquidity in the stock market than there's ever been in times past. So since shares of these companies are trading hands more often, it means 
means that when a company is included and in index funds start buying, it doesn't put the same amount of upward pressure on the stock that it used to. Therefore, investors who are watching Airbnb, seeing that it could be added to the S&P 500 and hoping to get a boost off of that are probably not going to actually see that. It would appear that Airbnb stock will either do well or do poorly based on fundamental reasons with the business. And that is what I believe that investors should be focusing on, not worrying about whether or not it's gonna be actually included in the S&P 500, because that's actually going to give it very little benefit. Now, all of the things that make Airbnb stock potentially a good investment or a bad investment, that is fodder for a future video. So if you wanna see a video like that, please let me know by giving this video a like or subscribing or commenting down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one.